Hey guys, I just came back from Hong Kong and it was an amazing trip. You see, when you when I first arrived, I um you know what? Let me show you. seven days in Hong Kong, and even though I was kind of out of my comfort zone, it was definitely one of the most amazing and exotic trips of my life. But before I tell you about this amazing city, my story begins back home, in the States. Here I am at my house. My flight leaves at 11 and I need to be at the airport at 6. I know that's a huge 5 hour gap, but you'll find out why later. And I got my Hong Kong money in advance right here. If this money looks familiar, it's because I used it in the Cajun Fries video. I don't like to use my debit or credit card when I travel internationally. It's those foreign transaction fees, you know. They may not be much, but they do add up. You know, and I just like to play it safe and just use cash. Of course, don't carry this much cash with you. Just take what you need and leave the rest in the hotel safe. While we're on the topic of stuff that'll get the audience's eyes rolling, I have one gripe about my US passport. I know immigration is a hot button issue right now, but that's not what this is about. If you have a US passport, you'll know that it's filled with stuff that's symbolic of America. If you can look past the text, you'll see the Colorado Rockies, what appears to be Montana, Statue of Liberty, the Mississippi River, Hawaii, and of course, the friggin' moon. As I flip through the pages with my passport, I gotta ask, why no love for California, bros? Come on, we even got the free states in here. Alaska and Hawaii, which you just saw earlier. You know, no Hollywood sign? No Golden Gate Bridge? Not even Lake Tahoe? Is it Jake and Logan Paul? Because technically they're from Ohio. Ooh, my ride's here. That's right, I'm heading to the airport in a Mercedes. Driven by a chauffeur that is definitely not my mom. And we're currently driving through LA traffic. But believe it or not, this is not the reason why I wanted to leave early. We'll get to it, we'll get to it, don't worry. Huh, you know, LAX at night looks like a Mario Kart level. Now I arrived a bit early, the airline I'm flying with, Asiana, is not open yet. Time for a little pop culture reference double dipping. Time for a round of Mario Kart luggage dolly. Yeah, I'm hey, Mayor. I tried to do a vlog here. Do you mind? Oh, he lost my vote. I had to cancel the CRJ Manchild Hour short. You see my luggage cart? Yeah, that one. It's by far the worst luggage cart I have ever used. Here's why I hate this cart so much. I can't just simply push it because it says right here you, you gotta press down in order to make it go forward you let go it stops pretty much immediately so you want to keep this moving you gotta keep pressing down and if you think lugging all this heavy baggage is bad try pushing down on this thing it's gonna make it at least 40 percent more harder eventually the counter opened it was time for me to check it now the thing about international travel is Oops, in the wrong line. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. That's right. I bought myself a business class seat. Because I'm over six feet tall, and there's no way in Hellman's mayonnaise I'm going to sit on a Trans-Pacific flight in some dumpy little coach seat. They even have a carpet for me. I'd like to point out that even though I am business class, there is no priority security access. Strike one. 100 LEX. I just passed security where I gave him the old mail review. And it's now it's time to go onto the terminal. But this isn't just any terminal. Architecture is cool and all, but the real reason I came to the airport early was for this. With business class tickets, I get free access to the lounge. Let's check it out. And I should follow everyone else asleep, type away on their computer while reading the newspaper. But um, I was lucky to afford a business class ticket. So really, I just want to sit here, enjoy my free booze, and just soak it in because I may not have this experience again. Oh, and if you think this is luxurious, wait till you see the plane. There was a direct flight to Hong Kong. Okay, now the real plane. Oh, but I'm not flying no ordinary plane. This plane is a beast. This plane is a behemoth. This plane is being blocked by the jet ramp. Anyway, this is the plane. This one, the Airbus A380. That's what I'm flying on. The A380 is, um, is a piece of serious engineering. It, they make those wings are freaking huge. You can put like two bendy buses on those things. You really have to come and see these in person. I watching my YouTube video isn't really going to do it justice. Think that's cool? Wait till I get inside. <laughs> Apparently, I'm going to have to take the C train to the gate. That's how big the A380 is. Even though I had the luxury of flying business class, I did not let it go to my head. Peasant, 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 peasant. Ticket stub already came loose. Okay. I'm going upstairs. Oh, sorry. Alright, I'm in my seat. I'm using my iPhone to film this. Because as you can see, my Canon camera's a bit too uh, big and wide. Anyway, this instantly passes the legroom test. Headphones. Headphones, yeah. A little light. And uh, we got some reading material, probably all in Korean. This the thing that kind of looked like the old PSB. Anyone remember that? Oh, that's the remote for this. TV. The first case. <laughs> you probably have a configuration similar to a Super Nintendo. Yeah. All right, let's check out the free swag, I guess, with his flight. Uh, Earplugs. <laughs> the cutest little thing of As I waited for my plane to leave the gate, 
I reflected on how air travel used to be. Air travel was a fancy thing only available to the privileged few. It was an event you dressed up for, and on top of that, you were treated to five-star dining and cared for with the deepest sincerity by the stewardess. Now it's just a glutton of stressed passengers, missing luggage, and hidden airline fees. So what I mean, here's a picture of me in an Air Canada Rogue flight. As you can see, I have absolutely no leg room. But what do I expect from an airline whose staff dresses like this? But despite all that, luxury in air travel is still available. You just need to pay a pretty penny. Over 30,000 of them to be specific. Eventually my flight took off from LAX. By the time my plane hit cruising altitude, it was already mealtime. And I gotta say, it looked good. Again, looked good. I, what I mean by that is that, you know, it had the appearance of fanciness. The stewardess came to my seat and laid out a white tablecloth. They had a little tray with all the fancy trimmings. And they even used real metal silverware. But despite all that, the food tasted... Eh. Because scientifically speaking, when you're in a plane cabin at cruising altitude, your taste buds are just not up to task. So yeah, it doesn't matter if you have Wolfgang Puck in the galley. It's just gonna taste meh. Turn the thing into a bit. Look at that. Of course, my feet barely fit inside that little uh, cubby right there. But still. Yeah, there's a reason why behind that as well. Most airlines, especially those with long distance international routes, make their biggest profit on business class tickets. Now, when it comes to coaching first, they're barely making a profit. So it makes sense for them to cram as much business class seats on an airplane cabin. Although for once it felt good to lay down flat on an airplane, it still wasn't what I'd call comfortable. I got little bits of turbulence here and there and I just noticed something pretty, uh, for lack of a better word, bad about the airplane. I can't seem to find out to bring in air loss. The airplane I've been on has a little air loss and you can twist and turn. Only like TV budget air lines didn't have it. For shame, Asiana. For shame. There's the boom right there. dim lights down there. That's Pyongyang. That's technically I'm in North Korea. Help! Thankfully, I arrived in Seoul, South Korea to catch my connecting flight. I think that plane right there could be my next flight. And what's this? Huh. Apparently Tumblr owns an airline. On Tumblr. Tumblr Airlines, there is no classes. It's all coach. Although they charge extra for carry-on luggage and white cis male passengers. Also, the stewardess suffers some form of bipolarism. CRJC Neistat is deboarding the plane. Talk to Hong Kong. Anyway, I reek from my 12 hour flight. I'm gonna find a pharmacy and uh, and uh, get them deodorant. Be glad smell of vision hasn't been invented yet. I think Korea has missed the idea 
about a curved TV. Yeah, the bears in Korea are sure different from the ones we have in California. So I'm just uh, waiting for my connecting flight to Hong Kong. And um, as I sit here waiting, I kind of came to a weird, weird realization. You see, I originally wanted to go to uh, Dubai, but uh, my mom said no because it's unsafe. Also, uh, my one of my family members did some business with some uh, shady people there, and it got pretty messy and I guess guilt by association or whatever. So we settled on Hong Kong because it was safer. But here's the crazy part. I am about an hour or two away from the North Korean border. And our loudmouth president isn't making things better. So thanks for the idea, Mom. One thing I should point out about South Korea, the internet here is second to not. I mean, look. I'm streaming the Grand Tour on Amazon Prime and it's not lagging at all. You look back at the States, I have to keep uh, pausing and starting it to make sure it doesn't go all pixely on me. Hey, if you're gonna play MMORPGs for 48 hours straight till you die, you need top notch bandwidth. Huh, apparently Seoul Airport also doubles as a Pokemon Stadium. Let's imagine the Pokemon music, I'm not gonna do it. Thankfully, my flight to Hong Kong was ready to board. First one on the plane. I saw the A330, I didn't really thought it would live up to the expectation of the 380, but when I got on board, wow. First off, the scene where I board the plane. Now of course if you enter from the front of the plane, you gotta go through the little uh, fly attendance area, and that little narrow entrance where the bathrooms are, and of course the cabin. To show you, however, what I didn't show you, mainly because I was too embarrassed, was that it was crazy narrow. I had to walk sideways to get through it. And for the first time I actually needed a seatbelt extender. You know, despite being my size, I didn't need one on any of the previous flights. Not even on the A380, but I needed one for this. As for the cabin itself, the seats and leg room were all right, but everything else just seemed like 12 years out of date. But it wasn't all bad, for one very good reason. Well, that and also this. There's something really relaxing about those clouds. All we need is some perfect music to match, and it'll be relaxation perfection. De-stress yourself with the power of fair use. And before you know it, I landed in Hong Kong. And that concludes part one of my Hong Kong vlog. Join me next time when I actually vlog about Hong Kong.